Hello brethren in Christ, happy new month. It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will bless us this new month. Welcome to the Narrowest Christ of All Nations. Let us pray. Lord, you have called us into this kingdom, not because we merit it in any way, but because of your loving kindness that does not fail. You have called us into this kingdom and we are obligated to learn the ways of this kingdom and behave like citizens of this kingdom. Now, Lord, look at this great gift you have given to us, the gift of righteousness, which we are not worthy of on our own. But Jesus Christ made us to have all our righteousness in him so that in him we can be fulfilled and made righteous declared righteous declared not guilty and acquitted of all our sins and its consequences thank you lord for this great gift of salvation and righteousness in christ jesus father lord we ask that you teach us your word speak through me Open our hearts, open our eyes, enlighten our minds, and help us to hear your word and love you more, so that we can grow in the, in the knowledge of the Lord and the grace of God most high. Lord, correct all our misbeliefs, correct all our mistakes, and help us to love you. Help us take a step closer even at least a step closer in jesus christ's name we pray amen welcome to to this message i am brother hosanna david please if you're new to this channel hosanna e. E. david i beg you to subscribe kindly like and share my videos if you comment and share it will help youtube to recommend this video to others please help us to beat youtube youtube and facebook algorithm thank you as you watch this video it's my prayer that the lord will bless us through his word today in jesus christ's name amen today we are considering the topic our righteousness in christ and its evidence our righteousness in christ and its evidence last week we talked about our righteousness in christ today we want to look at another part of it if we have the righteousness of christ what evidence do we have to show that yes we have the righteousness of christ i'm a new creature all things are passed away behold all things have become new second corinthians 5 verse 17. what evidence do we have because christ is in us how do we show to those in the world that we have the righteousness of Christ, we are new creatures. That is what we want to talk about today. Or is it that if you have the righteousness of Christ, people can't see it? They, is it that there is no evidence of it, no physical or tangible evidence to show that, yes, I have the righteousness of Christ. I was born into the world, now I am in Christ, and this is the evidence of my righteousness in Christ. Is there nothing we can show for it at all? Last week, I talked about the righteousness, our righteousness in Christ. And I said, righteousness is a gift. Jesus Christ died in our place. When we were condemned in our sins, he came and died. And because he died for sin, in fact, it became sin for us. We became the righteousness of Christ. Christ's righteousness was imputed to us. Uh, the next uh, week I'm going to talk about subsequent message I'm going to talk about is going to be a form of teaching the four types of righteousness in the New Testament in Christianity four types of righteousness so please if you haven't subscribed or you are not following please subscribe and follow so that you can be a part of that teaching I will take my time to analyze the different types of righteousness but today we want to talk about 
the evidence of Christ's righteousness in us. We did not buy the garment of righteousness. Somebody paid for it. He paid with his own blood. Remember, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So when he died, he shed his own blood. He offered himself on the altar. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Not just us, but the sins of the world, the whole world. So when he died on the altar of Calvary, he offered himself as the Lamb of God. And when he shed his blood, our sins were all blotted out. So when someone repents and say, oh, I have, I have been committing sin. Now I have accepted Christ into my heart, giving God my life. And you confess your sins. First of all, you have to believe. You have to confess. You have to be baptized. And you have to be born again. Baptism is just one of the processes. Uh, it's one of the stages of being born again. You, if you are baptized, you have to be born of the water and of the spirit and then of the word of God. The word of God has to give birth to you. So when you are born again, when you are born of the water of the spirit and of the word of God, you have the righteousness of Christ. But there is one righteousness that the modern church tries to overshadow by stressing, overemphasizing the imputed righteousness, which is a righteousness that was imputed to us. Uh, we can broadly say that there are two types of righteousness, broadly. One is the one that was imputed to us, which is the one we got from Christ. We never worked for it, we just believed. And it was imputed unto us. And then also the inherent righteousness. That is the righteousness we produce. And that is a major point I want to stress today. Because there are lots of people. If, if you are following me for a while now. Or if you are among those who have been following me for years. You will know that I have been using the word of God to counter a lot of heretic teachings, a lot of false, false doctrines and false teachings. Because a lot of people now believe that once you have the righteousness of Christ and that is enough, oh, now you can go back to your normal life and start stealing. No, because we receive the garment of righteousness, we are obligated to keep the garment of righteousness pure and white without spots and wrinkles. And if by any means it has any spots or wrinkle, we dip it in the blood, into the blood of a lamb and make them white immediately. Because sin is not a patch of our new nature. Our new nature is a nature that takes after God. The word of God is in us and whosoever has the seed of God in him, does not commit sin that means he does not live in sin and for any reason if by mistake he sees a spot on the garment of righteousness he receives from christ free of charge then he has to wash it the provision has been made but for those who sit on top of their old lifestyle and decide to continue to enjoy their life of sin they are never born again because he that is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever commits sin is of the devil and not of God. Let's look at the test for today. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 and then verse 17. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is said on the right hand of God. Now, if um, I have been saying, and which is the truth, that baptism represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when you say you, were born, you want to follow Christ, you have to agree that he came in human form, that God came as the Son of Man, put on human flesh, lived on this earth, and then was killed died was buried 
and resurrected from the dead. So that belief is what you demonstrate as a believer through water baptism. It is a way of being born again. You don't need to enter into your mother's womb a second time and be born again. No. But this is a way of being born again. And when you exercise this, your, when you exercise your faith and you undergo this process, it is a physical way of demonstrating your faith in Christ. You, as you are raised from the water, you are risen with Christ. You are risen with Christ into newness of life. That is what this passage is saying. If you have been risen with Christ, if you have been buried with him, if you have been buried with him and you have risen with Christ, from that moment, you have to seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on, on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, which is our life, shall appear, then shall he appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Look at the list. Fornication. Mortify means put to death. Kill. Deadening. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, these are the things that we all will engage in, in one way or the other. Now that we have been buried and risen with Christ, we have to make sure that we no longer exhibit this lifestyle, but we have to put on Christ, which is our new nature, and begin from that moment, fix our eyes on things above and not on things on the earth. Let's continue. Verse 7, In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. That means before you accepted Christ before you accepted the free gift of salvation, before you were given the garment of righteousness, ye once walked in these things. This was your former life. Verse 8, but, but now ye also put off all these. That means these things that used to be part of the old man, part of the old nature, the natural man that walks contrary to the will of God, the ways of the flesh. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with its deed. Now, these are the evidences of Christ's righteousness in us. If Christ is our righteousness, if he had taken away our guilt, and he has set us free from the law of sin and death, and we now live according to the law of Christ that brings life, peace, and joy, if we live in the liberty that Christ has given to us, we no longer go to enslave ourselves in the deeds of the flesh, the things that we once lived in, that Christ came to save us from. For he came to destroy the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh. These are sinful deeds. Let's move on. 1 John chapter 3, 1 to 9. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Yes, what manner of love. This is amazing love. It is an amazing love. It is an amazing grace. We never merited it. 
He showered his love upon us. He bestowed this amazing love upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now, now, listen, now, now that we have received the righteousness of Christ, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall all, for we shall see him as he is. And every man, every man that had this hope in him, purified himself as he is pure. If you are called by a pure father, by a holy God, and you are now the sons of God, the DNA of Christ is in you. You drink his blood, you feed on his flesh. If you are now one with Christ because you have one spirit with him, you are one spirit with Christ, then you must purify yourself. Even as we await the appearing of the Lord, we must purify ourselves as children of God. As we await the rapture. Verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He was manifested to take away our sins. Now, if it says whosoever that committed sin transgressed the law and that he came to take away sin and give us the true nation that we lost in the Garden of Eden, even a better one. That means we are obligated to stop committing sin. And when people see us, you know, the righteousness of Christ is in us. But for us to shine our light in the world so that when men see us, they give glory to our Father in heaven, we must stay away from sin. And that is where the second type of righteousness comes in which is the inherent righteousness, the righteousness in you. Please, I beg you to follow this teaching to the end because it is rich, it is going to help you and I. Let's move on. Verse 6, 1 John 3, 6 following. Whosoever abided, whosoever abided in him, sinneth not. If you are in Christ, you no longer commit sin. That doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. But you don't live in sin. That is what it is saying. You don't plan to commit sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Wow. <laughs> Isn't this trouble for those who believe that you can be a Christian and live your life the way you want? They say, oh, Jesus Christ is your righteousness. We don't need to uh, follow any law. We don't need to um, stop committing fornication or adultery because Jesus Christ has obeyed all the law. Now, for the fact 
that you receive this free gift of righteousness and that righteousness has been imputed imputed unto you you are obligated to bear good fruits remember it's just it's not just being uh declared acquitted no we have also been admitted into the kingdom of god remember the lord's prayer our father which are in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven so from that moment you enthrone god's will over your life you can agree with me that god's will is not for you to communicate to commit a fornication it's not for you to steal it's not for you to lie it's not for you to live in sin it's not for you to plan evil against your neighbor but the will of god for you is to be holy just as he who called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation in everything you do this is the will of god for us imagine a situation whereby you um you run as a refugee and you find yourself in the u.s and the government of the u.s say okay um we can grant you asylum okay you come and become a citizen of this country free of charge you're not paying anything okay uh, imagine a situation whereby uh you came from among the uncontacted people who are not used to putting on clothes the amazon and in your culture you do go naked everywhere you go you go naked you don't put on clothes because that is your culture that is your tradition in your country there are uh, uncontacted people even in nigeria different places in the world who don't either don't wear anything at all they go about stuck naked or they were um they are gladly dressed as you mean you are from that place and now you find yourself in the u.s seeking asylum May I shock you that the U.S. government will never allow you to go about naked in the public because it is against the law. That's the truth. Even though we know Satanism is taking over a lot of the sectors of our society and a lot of uh, our, taking over uh, a lot of our laws and stamping in satanism in many places it is still a law that a law of indecent exposure the body is yours but people deserve the right not to see your nakedness so if you say oh in my place we go naked everywhere we go so how why must you first there are laws you must obey you must respect if you're from the jungle where survivor of the fetus is the order of the day now you are in a land where you have to respect the rights of others and if you can't respect the fundamental rights of others it means you are not qualified to be a citizen there are documents you must sign you must uphold the constitution of the land imagine a situation whereby someone seeking asylum you are offered free citizenship and you say i don't want to recognize the constitution of this land that is what a lot of people are doing they don't want to recognize the constitution of heaven they don't want to recognize the constitution of god they believe that they can live their lives the way they want even in the kingdom of god this is a lie it doesn't 
work like that. We as believers, we must understand that we have been called into the kingdom of God. Not as slaves in this kingdom, but as a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A royal priesthood. There are things we must do and there are things we must not do. For the fact that we have been called by God's name and have been admitted into this kingdom as God's children, we must live according to the standard of this kingdom. 1 John 3, 1 Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now that we are sons of God, you have to live like your father, God himself. This was a problem John had with the, the, some of the teachers of the Lord, some of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, some of the scribes. This was a problem he had. Those people said they were children of Abraham, but they were not living like the children of Abraham. They called themselves the elect of God. They, they called themselves righteous because they could offer sacrifices and keep the ceremonial law, but inwardly they were so wicked. They were so wicked. The righteousness, there was no inherent righteousness in many of them. And Jesus had problem with them. John the Baptist had the same problem with them. So let's look at the Bible. This is exactly what a lot of people were doing. They said, we are born again. We believe in the gospel. But if you dead, leave your daughter for them, your daughter will multiply to become pregnant. If you leave your husband for them and tell them, oh, I'm traveling for two months. Could you please help me take care of my husband? And take care of my children just check on them <laughs> you could become you could take the position of your friend who is unmarried and then your friend could become the real husband i mean the real wife that's the truth we live in a world some who call themselves christians <laughs> a mother it's it's sunny but this is the world we live in a mother went to look after her daughter who gave birth and the baby in the daughter's matrimonial home and then the mother became the housewife and got married to the daughter's husband and became pregnant for her for him this is the kind of world we live in and many of those people are those who speak in tongues. As a matter of fact, I feel so disgusted. I'm not trying to claim self-righteousness, but you see people who, have, who don't bear any fruit of the Spirit. I'm not trying to judge anybody better. We have the Word of God. That is our standard. You can steal and kill and prostitute yourself, yet claim to be a child of God. It's so disgusting when you see people who are physically worldly, I'm not trying to judge your appearance, but if you are of Christ, you must bear the fruit of repentance. You must bear the fruit of righteousness. The fruit of the Spirit must be seen in you. You can be a wicked person in your family, in your workplace, in your environment, and in the night, you are speaking in tongues and praying and disturbing everybody. See people claiming self-righteousness. As a matter of fact, one thing is, is, is so disturbing today that people believe that they can pray and, and speak in tongues and pray for three hours. But you don't practice the faith you claim to believe. You can do all sorts of terrible things and yet claim to be a Christian. It's disgusting. 
People now prostitute. You, your body is the temple of God. There are many people who claim to be Christians who are professional prostitutes. They don't see anything wrong with it. But you can come out of the house of prostitution and you want to bind Satan. How dare you? You want to bind Satan? Have you forgotten that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much? And that the prayers of sinners are abomination to God, except there be prayers of repentance. Today, people believe that, oh, because you believe, and because you have confessed Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can go and start binding Satan, like the seven, seven sons of Sceva. He doesn't work like that. Some believe that because they scream, because they know how to, they have practice how to speak in tongues and quote scriptures, they will be heard by heaven. It doesn't work like that. You have to be Christ's own. Anyone who had this hope purified himself. If you have this hope, Verse 3, 1 John 3, 3. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Do you, have you received the imputed righteousness for free in Christ? Then bear the fruit of the Spirit. Are you born again? Then let's see. Well, um, let's move on. Let's read uh, Matthew chapter 3, 7 to 10. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, This is John the Baptist. O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, look at verse 8, bring forth therefore Fruits, meats for repentance. The fruits, the character that flows from inside, not hypocrisy. Bring forth, therefore, fruits that are worthy of repentance. If you say you have repented, let us see the fruits because your life can never remain the same again. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able out of this, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, and now also the ass is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire. So don't say we are Abraham's children. If you are Abraham's children, why are you not behaving like Abraham's children? Jesus Christ had the same issues with the same people. John 8, 34, 37, and 39 to 41. Let's read together. Look at the screen. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Now, listen. Jesus Christ came to destroy the power of sin. He came to save us from our sins. Look at the first John 3 we read. First John 3 verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. Remember the topic of today is our righteousness in Christ and its evidence. One of the evidence, evidences of having received the righteousness of Christ is that you are born of God and you don't commit sin. You don't live in sin. Because the seed, the word of God, abide in you. The word of God remaineth in you. Look at part B. Or verse 8, 
For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, if the works of the devil had been destroyed and you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, which is the church. Look, if you continue to live in sin, you are not Christ's own at all. You are not Christ's own. Because the evidence that you are born again is that you don't live in sin. Look at verse 38. Okay, verse uh, 34, part B. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin, and not a servant of Christ. I know that, verse 37, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word had no place in you. So if you have the word of Christ in you, you don't plan to kill. For those of you who commit abortion and kill, or you are into witchcraft or into different kind of kingdoms and you kill, you are not of Christ. You are not Abraham's children. Because by their fruits, we shall know them. Verse 39. And verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would have done the works of Abraham. This is it. If you are born again, you should do the work of Christ. And not the work of sin. Because if you keep living in sin, you are not born again. You don't even know him. That's what the Bible says. Verse 40, but now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham never did this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we do not, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own. That is his original language. For he is a liar, and the author and the father of it and because i tell you the truth ye believe me not jesus christ looked at those people eyeball to eyeball and he told them you are not abraham's children i know by descendants by blood you are abraham's children but by deed you are of your father the devil this is one of the strongest accusations Jesus Christ laid. And he was right. This is not judgment. This is a very clear uh, analysis. It is very clear. If you say, for instance, if you say you are the president's son, then you shouldn't be in the shelter with homeless people. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. If you are the president's son or the president's daughter, you shouldn't be homeless. Yes. At least he's a first citizen, is first among equals, first among all citizens. It's number one. So why should you be homeless when your father is a president of the country? So if you, listen, if you say you were born again and you were living in sin, this is the time for you to check yourself. Because the evidence that you have received the righteousness of Christ is that you are obligated 
not to go back to your sins. Have you ever been faced with your personal weakness and you see yourself doing what you're not supposed to do and because you have no power to resist, you are crying. You are crying and asking God to help your weakness, but you have no power. That is different. Or you just realize that, oh, you just thought you were overtaken by anger and you were crying and asking God for forgiveness. That is different from planning to commit sin. A lot of people plan to commit sin. They will plan to travel to another state or to another city. They will deceive their wives, make preparation on dating apps, look for a prostitute and plan it and book appointment. A book a hotel and make a arrangement you are not a Christian you are not a Christian if you are overtaken by your weakness then the Lord understands that you were striving for righteousness but you were weak and overtaken by your weakness and when you come before the Lord and say I'm sorry he forgives you but a Christian does not live in sin. If you are born again, you don't plan to commit sin and you will never ever live in sin. Look at what Jesus Christ said, Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 21. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits if you are born again if you have received the righteousness of christ you should be known by your fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles no even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruits but the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruits a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit what is being referred to as fruit here your behavior your character your actions your words your re the way you relate with people your expressions neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit listen if christ is in you and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you will bear the fruit of the Spirit. There will be righteousness. There will be peace. There will be love. There will be kindness. You pursue after goodness from that moment. You have Christ living inside of you. You can say the kingdom of God is right inside of your heart. And you are living out real wickedness out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak it and out of the abundance of the heart all your actions are exhibited that is why when you want to repent it is actually repentance is a change of heart so if your heart has been changed and Christ is now in you and you have the righteousness of Christ why is it that it is very it is very very difficult for you to live the life that is expected of you let's continue verse 18 every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits you shall know them not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It is not about our profession. It is about our actions. The profession is good. Profess Christ with your mouth. Profess your faith with your mouth. But if you do not do the will of, fa of the Father, if you do not obey Christ, you won't enter into heaven because you don't belong to him 
You are a deceiver, a hypocrite. Look at the frustration of Jesus Christ. In this passage, the last verse. Luke chapter 6, 43 to 46. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Everyone is known by his own fruit, by their behavior, by the way they treat others. So if you are a Christian, you are known by your fruit. Look at what Jesus Christ even said here. He said, beware of false prophets. Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. And in verse 16, he said, you shall know them by their fruits. So it's not even about the miracles they perform. It's not even by the signs and the wonders. It's not by the healing. Anybody who has power can do healing, can perform miracles. There are lots of magicians who can do even uh, cause fire to fall down from, from the sky. They can turn water to wine. Remember what happened in Egypt. Pharaoh's magicians came up with their own miracles by their secret arts and perform some of the miracles that Moses that Moses did but it's the very first time he threw his he, he performed the miracle and threw his rod on the ground the magicians they came they threw their rods on the ground so it's not about a man of god praying or woman of god praying and you vomit poisons and you vomit maybe live cockroaches or a rat or disgusting things or vomit charms which could be shot into your body, by the way, they could be conjured into your stomach and you vomit them and you think, oh, God has performed a miracle. Anybody with power, either of God or of the devil, can pray and you vomit things like that. But Jesus did not say by their signs and wonders you should know them. He said by their fruit. There is something that Satan can never produce and that is the works of righteousness he can never his servants can never live a righteous life except a form of it a counterfeit form of righteousness which is called hypocrisy mimicking outwardly what they are not inside that's hypocrisy Showing to people that they are good, meanwhile, inside there are dead men's bones and scorpions and vipers and all manner of deadly things. Jesus Christ said, those wolves in sheep clothing, you shall know them by their fruits. So if you say you are a believer, we will know you by your fruits. How you treat others. Look at what Jesus Christ said here. Verse 45. Luke 6, 45. A good, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is evil. For out of the above, for of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Look at the frustration of Jesus Christ in verse 46. And why ye call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. You called me Lord, but you don't obey me. You know how to sing. You know how to pray. But you don't obey me. It's frustrating. How many of you can marry a wife that will never love you with your heart? How many of you will marry a husband 
Who doesn't love you? If you know that, why would you go into that kind of relationship? It's frustrating to Jesus Christ. He asked them, you called me Lord, but you don't obey me. Yesterday, there, is, there are these children I got from the street. They were living on the street. Some of them have parents. And some of them don't have parents. There is this one of them that his mom got married to another man. So yesterday I was talking to him on the phone. And he said, um, let me give the phone to my brother. And I said, who is brother? For those of you who may not understand, over here we can address someone that is elderly. Brother, brother means um, it's a way of according respect to someone who is older than you, but you don't want to call them mommy or daddy. When you say sister, sister is a way of addressing. Um, you don't want to call their names and you call them sister or brother. It's a way of calling someone uncle instead of calling their name. And he said, let me give the phone to my brother. And I said, who is brother? So I talked to him. And I spoke with the man. You are his stepdad. Why is he not calling you daddy? He said, this boy doesn't obey him. So why call me daddy when you don't obey me? That was an issue I addressed yesterday on the phone. He said, what's the need of calling me daddy? So I told him to stop calling me daddy. Because you don't obey me. This is the same frustration of Jesus Christ. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You don't obey me, you don't keep my commandment, but my name is always on your lips. Why? How many of us today say that we are born again, that we are flying to heaven? that we have received the righteousness of Christ in us, but we do not have inherent righteousness. Just as he who called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Who has deceived us to believe that there is nothing for us to do again? Because we have received the righteousness of Christ. This is a call to repentance. This is a call for us to retrace our steps and go back to the truth. If you are living in sin and yet believe that you are born again, please retrace your steps. Let us pray. God, help us to know the truth and let the truth set us free from every bondage. We believe in you, we trust in you, and we know that he that is born of God, he that has received the righteousness of Christ, does not live in sin. Help us many who have been deceived to believe that they just, re they just need to rely on the imputed righteousness only and there is no need to bear the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit worthy of repentance. Lord, help them to know the truth. I pray for us many who are retracing their steps back to you, Lord, that you forgive their sins, forgive every of their unrighteousness, and help them to love you, to know you, to obey you all the days of their lives. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we've heard. 
I pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry in one way or the other. Those who have been praying for us, Lord, support them in the name of Jesus Christ. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. May the Lord take away your challenges. Open the windows of heaven upon your life. That hunger in you, may the Lord feel it. Whatsoever thing that is lacking in your life, a decree upon your life, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, take away temptations that we can't overcome from our path. Release hunger upon us and help us to continue to follow and continue to thirst, thirst for you all the days of our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E.E. E. Devi. Please share our videos. Thank you for supporting us. Those of you who have been supporting our ministry, online ministry is quite expensive. Thank you for supporting us. And for those of you who do not have to give, there are other ways you can support us. Please pray for us. Pray for me. It's not easy to preach the truth. Please pray for me. Share our videos and also recommend our channel to others. If you have any questions, feel very free to contact me. If you want me to pray for you um, or there is something you want to share with me, my contact details are on the screen. Thank you and God bless you. Bye.